You're live with BBC News. Now it's time for our weekly look at the world of artificial intelligence. It's AI Decoded. So this is the time of the week when we look at some of the most eye-catching stories around AI. And we're going to start with the big news. EU agrees historic deal with world's first laws to regulate AI. That's the Guardian there. The New York Times, the climate summit embraces AI with reservations. That's at the COP28 climate summit there. AI was a key part of discussions. It can be used to fight emissions, but systems can take a huge amount of energy to run. Next, Google unveils MedLM, a family of healthcare-focused generative AI models. Could Google utilise its generative artificial intelligence tools in healthcare? Well, there's a progress report there in TechCrunch. Name that whale, how AI aces animal spotting. So this is software that trawls through photographs of more than 70,000 different whales and uh, helps you identify them. Stories on the BBC website there. You can even name a whale if it hasn't been spotted before. There you go. And it's not just you. Chat GPT is lazier. Open AI confirms. Uh, that's Mashable there reporting. Users think the software has been getting lazier. We'll try and explain that. Lastly, this from the Washington Post. My AI Christmas card is a total fake, uh, but the joy is real. If you've been feeling a little lazy yourself and want to avoid making Christmas cards, their tech columnist has a guide on using AI image generators to make Christmas cards with uh, varying levels of success. Well, Stephanie Hare is here, author and commentator on tech and artificial intelligence. Stephanie, great to see you. Hey. Uh, so you're going to talk us through all these weird, wild and wonderful stories. Let's start with the big proper news, though, shall we? Uh, EU agrees historic deal with world's first laws to regulate AI, reported in The Guardian and lots of other places. Talk us through it. Right. So I think the first thing that we want to understand is this is like a provisional agreement. Right. It's a political agreement. We don't even have the complete text to look at yet, and we won't have that until probably the end of January. Okay. And then it still has to go through yet another European Union hurdle, which is going to be the council. And that's where the member states, most likely France and Germany, may yet still try to revise or water it down. So we are not out of the woods yet. Okay. Not out of the woods, but what's, give us the kind of headline of what it's trying to do. What it's trying to do is to be really the first landmark piece of legislation to govern this technology. So China, we have to acknowledge, already passed its own law back in mm -hmm. August. So they were really the first ones. But they don't have as big of an influence around the world in terms of standard setting. The EU really will do that if this actually makes it through, which it probably will. So we've got some things like a ban on real-time surveillance and biometric technologies but always with exceptions. And those exceptions are what you'd think, police and national security, which of course is where the biggest abuses could happen. It's not like national governments are always benign actors, right? So that's a problem. Social scoring, China style, is banned. Emotion recognition technology, which is super sketchy, 19th century pseudoscience. I don't know why that hasn't been banned outright. That's still allowed to be used by the police. So it's really a mixed report card. OK, so should we come back to that in the new year then to yeah. try and see when we get the full text, see a bit more detail? For sure. Then. OK, great. Right, uh, let's go to the New York Times because uh, COP28, the big climate summit, uh, making headlines for all sorts of reasons. Uh, the climate summit embraces AI with reservations. So uh, what's the AI angle here? The AI angle is that, it, as with all AI stories, you can make a pros and a cons column. Mm -hmm. So on the one hand, people who love AI are like, AI could help us solve climate change. And how is that? It's transparency. So we could use satellites to help find offenders with methane emissions, for instance, which we can already do. Um, identifying the discovery of new materials that are more environmentally friendly, like with advanced mm -hmm. batteries, so forth and so forth. You, you get the picture. The dirty secret about AI is this. It's energy intensive. It's also wow. water intensive and generative AI even more so. So most people don't know this. So I will tell you now. You've got a glass of water on your table there. Let's pretend that it's a half a liter of water. That's how much every interaction with chat GPT drinks. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that's 100 million weekly active users. 
Wow. Half a liter okay. every time. But nobody talks <coughs> about that when they're talking right. about how great ChatGPT is, but it isn't from a water and energy perspective. Fascinating. So the water thing I don't have an answer for, but presumably if the energy intensive use, even if it stays the same, but if the energy is generated in a clean way, yeah. then it's still fine. But the problem is, of course, at the moment it isn't. So Exactly. It's so it's an opportunity oh. for whoever's big on renewables. God, you're fascinating. Right, let's look at a potential another use. Google unveils MedLM, a family of healthcare-focused generative AI models. Uh, lots of people, me included, lost even in the headline here. Yes, so I love that they call it a family of healthcare-focused mm. AI models. It sounds so friendly and nice. Um, what they're really just saying is we put out a product suite. Right, it's okay. trained on large language models. Isn't that exciting? It is potentially exciting because I think if you talk to a lot of healthcare professionals, they would say they don't get to do what they want to do, which is to look after patients. They're mm. too busy doing all the paperwork and admin. Anything that cuts that down and gets them patient focused sounds great, except as ever, there's a fly in the ointment. In October, the World Health Organization warned the risks of using generative AI specifically in healthcare. What are the risks? Harmful, wrong answers. It's quite important in yep. healthcare, you'd think. <laughs> Propagating disinformation, okay. Don't want that for health issues. And then my favorite is that it could accidentally reveal health or other sensitive information. So you can still break these models. So uh, really, again, proceed with caution. There's a lot of very aggressive, bullish head headlines about AI in healthcare. Highly regulated industry. You really do not want to be putting out in inaccurate healthcare information. You just right. don't. OK, a, li a literal health warning on that one. Yeah. Thank you, Stephanie. OK, um, I don't even know where to start with this one. This is the, from the BBC. Name that whale, how AI aces animal spotting. Go on. Go on then. So I normally am quite uh, scared of computer vision technology because that's things like facial recognition or other voice biometric technologies. But in yeah. this case, I quite like it because it's being used on animals. Whether or not we can argue that animals should have privacy or rights is another thing. Maybe we shouldn't be surveying them. But at the moment, we can. And if we did it to help with conservation yes. efforts, that's great. So you go to take a picture of a whale on your holiday. You upload it into the database, whale ID, then can say, we've seen that whale before. It's a known offender in this area, a known tourist in this ocean. And it might even have a name, but it's also going to be seen. It was previously spotted here, there, and everywhere. So you can track it. Hey. Let's take a look at some of the images. I think we've got some of the images of this here because we can't be talking about whales. And not... There we go. Lots of whale t <laughs> tails, I guess. OK, so you take that kind of photo, you put it in, it tracks yeah. down not only what kind of exact whale it is and yeah. whether the whale's got a name, but also kind of where it is and where it moves and kind of stuff like that. Exactly. Yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Tr tracks. Yeah, this is great, isn't it? It's great because you could actually use this to help protect whales by telling ships there are whales in the area. They've literally been spotted here this week. So mm. don't go into them because they get hit and they get struck and then killed. I see. So as well as kind of that tourist holiday, it's fun to yeah. look exactly. Oh, I know that whale is named whatever, blah, blah, blah. It's actually a serious kind of conservation Absolutely. Uh, use as well. Absolutely. And not well. just whales, plants, birds, everything. And with birds, it's not just the picture. It's also their sound. So it's like Shazam for music. You right. could do Shazam for bird song and probably even other animals. Fascinating. Yeah. OK, I like that. Uh, this one, uh, you will have to do a lot of explaining from because I just don't get it. This is Mashable. Um, and the headline is quite provocative. It's not just you. Chat GPT is lazier. Open AI confirmed. What, what on earth is going on? It's super weird. Basically, OpenAI said that they hadn't updated their model since the 11th of November and that somehow they felt that this meant that people were getting an inferior user experience because they put in certain prompts and it takes a while for that to trickle through for users to note. That said, we've been looking in the gossip boards on this. People have been complaining about AI uh, and OpenAI in particular being a bit lackluster in its responses for the past six months. So is it recent or is it just finally making it through or is Mashable just having fun? I loved it, though. Lackluster responses, only responding to some requests, not as helpful as it used to be. Whenever people say that AI is going to replace humans, I'm not so sure. Well, that, they, they sound very familiar right. human, human traits, don't they? Yeah, they uh, they're, they're replacing our worst traits, not our best ones. Uh, on, on, a bit more seriously, on, 
on, on chat GPT, just before we move on from it, um, laziness aside or, or, or accuracy aside, what are your kind of assessments of where we are now with it? Because we've, the initial hype clearly is there and, and receded a bit. Mm. What's your kind of assessment of where, where it stands now? My assessment would be that of the National Cybersecurity Centre here in the United Kingdom, which is that this technology is in beta. So right. play with it, experiment with it, do not base anything important on it, right? So yeah. when the National Cybersecurity says it could be a victim of data poisoning, which is how you would dirty a data set deliberately, very difficult to detect. We have no fail-safe mitigations. I would take that quite seriously if I were a CEO or general okay. counsel of a company. But if you're a software developer, you want to get 70% there and then check the work because you've already got a high level of expertise, it's a productivity tool for you, do it. I've seen lots of people using on LinkedIn to write very bloviating posts about how they're doing. Go for it. So the key, the key to it is if you have a level of expertise in the subject matter in which you're using it, yeah. tick, fine, because you can spot whatever's going on. But yeah. if you're an amateur at mm. something and trying to use it in an area that you're not so familiar with, be war. Yeah. Proceed with caution. Yeah. OK. I will. I mean, I, I, I always do. <laughs> uh, OK. Uh, let's talk about uh, how I made my Christmas card using Genitrib AI. I have not done this. I should emphasize this is Washington Post columnist. And it's a fabulous idea for an article anyway, isn't it? Uh, but can you just explain what's going on? Yeah, so this is um, written by the Washington Post's Jeffrey Fowler, who's a wonderful authority on all things AI. And what I love is he always experiments on himself. So he goes there so we don't have to. So he spent $49, which I feel is quite a lot, actually, okay. um, and a lot of time. But he was playing. It was a creative act. So rather than crafting, he did it with AI, um, trying to create some pictures of himself. And I must use the right word here because the way he wrote it in the article is it created an image of him without pants which has a really different meaning for uh, right. British English speakers. Yes, so it does. So the correct thing is it created an image of him without trousers. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for clearing that up so straight away. Either way, though, maybe not what you're wanting to send out to colleagues and grandparents, yeah. unless it is. Yeah. Um, but it made his family too white because he has a, a, a wife and children who are not white. So mm. what was that about? And also mm. too attractive. And I love that because he says AI has a hotness problem. That's because it's trained on the data of models people oh. in pornography and oh, then everybody's wow. two perfect selfies which is why nobody looks real when they've been through an ai filter oh wow i didn't yeah. i hadn't even thought about it. but yeah you're, it's only as good as the data that's kind of coming in and if the yeah. data is overly skewed yeah. in one direction or the other then that's so if you're sending out christmas photos of yourself looking way too good i don't know what's your family and friends going to say about that interesting so have fun with it again but maybe don't send them out yet and what about and he does detail here how you actually do it don't, you know, he, he kind of does, mm. as, as you, you mentioned, the cost of things are signing up, but he, the commands he puts in to ChatGPT to access the image generated. So yeah. it's, it, it isn't far off, it seems like. Actually, we could, clearly the results, uh, when, if you look at the picture, not, not great, obviously. But it doesn't seem from this that it's far off. Uh. We could be pretty close to actually using this and doing this. Oh, yeah, I mean, people do all the time. So he used an app called Lensa to make the selfie. He used Photoshop, which is quite old school mm. at the end. He had to use um, Dolly 3, which is part of OpenAI, uh, to do a little bit. But he also puts out something that I thought was quite cool. Dolly, the OpenAI uh, application, won't let, won't let you intentionally recreate a living person. And that's a guardrail around deep fakes, oh. Oh. which is a big problem with all of this, of course, because I could just make Christmas cards of you right. and put them out. You, like, you have nothing. There's no way you can stop me. Yes. But in this case, the tech actually tries to. But then I would just do the workaround that Mr. Fowler did and use Lenza I instead so th and then Adobe to put it all together. Basically, it's kind of like committing a crime, but creative and fun. And that's kind of an in microcosm, <laughs> in a kind of jokey way. That's a good, that's a good lesson, isn't it? An, an indication of actually the problem, even if you've got these guardrails in. Yep. Oh, there's always a workaround. That's, that's... For every rule, someone will find a way around it. This is human, human innovation in a nutshell. I, I love it. I, and I don't want to put a dampener on the fun story right at the end, but that slightly, that slightly worried me uh, ever so yeah, slightly. Uh, you usually just... get more fingers than most people actually yeah. have. That's the tell at the moment. It's almost as worrying as, as the image itself, which we don't need to see again. Stephanie, as always, thank you so much for coming in and talking us through exactly what's been going on. Really appreciate thank it. You. Thank you.
Alasic, we are out of time. We'll do this again same time next week. <laughs>